Hello, and welcome to another session of using the new Blender for video editing. In the last session, I showed you how you can use the transform effect strip inside of the video sequence editor to rotate a video if it didn't come in properly. So as you can see here, we have this video that I took in portrait mode. But when I go into Blender and I drag that into the video sequence editor, you can see it comes in sideways in landscape mode. So in the last video, we, we did this correction inside of the video sequence editor. Here, I'm going to show you how to use the compositor to get the same effect. And it's a lot of extra steps involved, but it's also a nice introduction into how you can use the compositor, which is something you can use to do more advanced things uh, like uh, green screening. And it's kind of fun to use as well. So let, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look and see what is the resolution we need. So to do that, uh, because we've got it selected right now, the video strip, we can just scroll down here until we find the source panel and open that up and scroll down a bit more. And we can see that it Blender thinks that it's 1280 by 720, but that's if it was landscape. We want it to be in um, portrait mode. So that means we, have to, we need to flip it to say 720 by 1280. So up over here in our properties editor, uh, within the output properties tab, I'm going to type in 720 and press tab and then 1280 and press enter. Okay, so now you can see here in the preview, that's the right shape of it. And what else are we going to do? What I'm going to do is I am going to get to the end of this strip. I'm going to press page up and then back up a bit until I can see a frame. Okay, and now we're going to set the end frame. So I can see here that it's 184, but here's a keyboard shortcut for you. You can just press Control End and Blender will set that value for you based off of where the time cursor is. Okay, so now we've got our scene is set up properly with the correct uh, resolution, the correct frame range. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I am going to delete these strips because they're wrong, or at least I'll get rid of I'll get rid of the video strip. I don't want that. So I will click on strip and delete. Okay, that's gone. It'll also bring us back to the start. At this point, we need to go into the compositor. So I, uh, I'm looking up here and I see we don't actually have one available right now, but we can just click on the plus sign here to add that workspace. And that's available under general. It's right over here, compositing the second one. So I'll click that. That takes us into this new screen layout that gives us what we need to get started. Um, now, one thing I like to do is I know that scene, we only have one right now and it's called scene. And this is the scene that we had started with. It's We had done all, all that setup in terms of the resolution and the frame range. But when I use the compositor and then bring results back into the video sequence editor, I like to work in a separate scene. Uh, with the same settings, the resolution and frame range. So instead of doing anything right now, the first thing I'm going to do is click on this button here for new scene, and I will choose copy settings. That way, the resolution and the frame range will be the same in this new scene that we create. And we can see that down here, if I, if I expand this out, and I click over here again to the output properties, you can see we've got our 720 and 1280. And down over here um, in the timeline editor, we can see that it is going still from 1 to 184. Now, the next thing I like to do is, is name my scenes. So this, and I try to name it based off of what I'm doing. So here, what we're doing is we're doing a, an import within the compositor. So I'm just typing that in there. Okay, there we go. With that set, we can start working. And pretty much all of our work is going to be in this editor here, which is the compositor. You can see it's uh, you hover over this icon and it can it says that right there. Um, first thing we need to do is click on this checkbox for use nodes. And then two things come up so we can scroll in so we can see it better. You see that we have render layers and composite. Uh, we only need this one. This is the final output. We don't need render layers, not for what we're doing here. So you can left click so that that becomes the only thing that's selected. And you can press X 
to delete it, or we can go to node and choose delete from here. Okay, so that's gone. Now the next thing to do is to add the nodes that we do need, starting with the input node for loading in the movie. So I click on add, input, and movie clip. As soon as I left click on that, then now this uh, movie clip a node is sort of attached to my mouse cursor. I have to left click to place it somewhere. So I'm just going to place it over here on the left. And with that in place, now we have to click on the open button and select our movie file. So I'll go find it now. And there it is. Okay. So with that loaded, now we can see that it once again is uh, being brought in in landscape mode, which is what we expect. But it's it's a little bit tiny to see in there. So it's nice. One of the nice features of the compositor is that you can get a nice larger preview of what you're working on uh, as a background to the editor itself. So to do that, uh, one easy way of doing it with a shortcut is by holding down on the control key, the shift key, and then left clicking on the thing that you want to get a view of, in this case, the input from this movie clip node. So I'm going to do that now, control, shift, and left click. And there we go. So it's added this viewer node, which I'm going to drag over to the right side. I'm going to bring that composite one down. And then we now we can see something in the background. It's uh, way zoomed in though. So what we can do is over uh, over here, we can click on this view tab and click on fit. Okay, and now it has zoomed everything out and everything looks correct right now. As I scrub through on the timeline, which is a little bit actually significantly slower than when we do work in the video sequence editor, you can see that it looks pretty much uh, like how we would expect. What we're going to find is once we do the rotation, it won't look proper inside of the compositor, but it'll look fine once we take the result out and use it in the video sequence editor. Okay, so now we have got our movie clip input node. We have our viewer output node here so we can see uh, what it is we're doing. And we still have the composite over here. The next thing to do is to add the node that will do that rotation for us, which is called the transform node. But before we do that, I am going to um, click on the backdrop checkbox. And this is just for demonstration purposes because I want to show you something about what happens when we start adding that trans uh, transform node. So I click that. So now backdrop is off. We don't see anything in the background anymore. Uh, and I will now go to add and go to distort. And near the bottom there, there's transform. And this is what I wanted to show you. So the nice thing about the compositor is that, as you can see, it we have lines going from node to node. That's how things connect. So the output from one node becomes the input of another node. So what happens when I move the mouse and then I place it such that the, the new node is over the line uh, that connects to existing nodes, then that line changes color. So that's telling you that as soon as you left click to place that node, then now this one will be um, working in between the two. So now the movie clip will feed the transform node, the transform node will apply its, its uh, processing there, and then the output of that transformation becomes the input to the viewer node. So I'm gonna left click now and there we go. We can see now it has is drawing these new lines, image output from movie clip to the image from transform, and then image from the as the output of transform becomes image to the viewer. That's all I wanted to show you there. So let's put backdrop back on so we can see what we're doing again. Now, of course, nothing has actually changed yet because all we did was bring the node in. We didn't change the rotation, and that's done right here. So I know that this is what I want is a rotation of negative 90 degrees. So I'm just going to type that in and press enter. And that's it. So 
the one thing I had mentioned before is that it doesn't look right inside of uh, the compositor because it still looks it looks like some kind of weird box and it's not showing us the entire content because as we can see from this little preview section here we're expecting to see you know part of the pole and definitely we're missing out bits from the top but again trust me it's going to be there the last thing we need to do before we go back into the video sequence editor is to draw a line from the transform node to the composite node. So I'm just going to do that now. Just left click, click and drag, join the line. There it is. Uh, that's it. So the bare minimum of what we need in the compositor is the input, which we get from the movie clip node, that transformation, which is a, uh, the transform node with a simple adjustment to the angle, and then feed that to composite. This viewer node is, is optional, but it's always handy to have. Okay, so with those pieces in place, we can go back to our video editing workspace. And at this point, and I noticed, okay, I'm still within that same scene that we created specifically for doing the import. I'm going to click here and go back to the original scene. And there we have our, our audio strip. And now I can go ahead and add that scene that we just worked on in the compositor. So go to add, scene, import within compositor, and there you have it. So we can scrub through. It's going to be a little bit slower than working with uh, the VSC directly. But it did the job, and the results look good to me. If I compare this up to the original video, there we have it. So that's it. How you can use Blender's compositor to change the orientation of a video if it didn't come in with the, the proper orientation. I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please do give it a like and subscribe so you can see more content when it comes. Thanks and bye now.